I remember the first time I met John Fleming. We were at a hotel in Washington, D.C. on a YPO trip. And John reached out to me across the room and said, hey, come have a seat, let's talk. And I remember at that moment, John opened up his heart and we created a friendship that is very special and one that I will remember forever. John was one of the most compassionate men I'd ever met. Uh, I'd had several conversations with him personally over the you know, 19 years, uh, and we would both talk about our families and, and our lives, and, and you know, both personally and professionally, and how blessed we were uh, to be in the community we were in, to be selling beer for a living, you know, what a great opportunity that is. Uh, but also, you know, his compassion for his, his co-workers. Uh, he had an open door policy uh, with his office and that was, it didn't matter who you were, uh, what level of the organization you were in, he, his door was always open to you and he always listened contently. John was also one that you could lean on for business advice anytime. Many people in the community and throughout the country, when they were in a tough business situation, would reach out to John, and John always lended a hand and was more than willing to give any advice and would stop anything in his life to care about that person that was calling. He had a tremendous impact on the community, whether it was the Columbus Zoo, uh, the Driven Foundation, JDRF, Greater Columbus Sports Commission, anything he got involved with, he, he made it better. Uh, and not just with his wallet, but with his, with his time as well. Uh, and I think if you ask anybody in Columbus, they would tell you that, that uh, that's what's gonna be missed most about John is, is what he gave back to the community and to the people of the community uh, and how he spent his time and resources. Uh, he, he was a blessing to the community. Well, I can't tell you the number of times, whether it was working in the afternoon or late at night on the weekends and calling John saying, John, I'm having a problem. And what I always knew is, he would be there in no time and would help me out and smile and say, Chad, call me anytime you need anything. Cheers to Bodie, John. I love you, man. I came back from California and they had the dude operating in Pasadena. And Gregory said, well, let's try it. And I said, no, nah, it'll never work in Columbus. Columbus is too conservative. Um, they won't go for it. And he goes, well, let's try it. And lo and behold, the first three were like, how can I put it? Spanky and our gang productions. Uh, and finally, about the fourth one, we were starting it out on uh, over there at the Goodale Park. And there weren't any cell phones back then or um, golf carts or anything like that. And we had no idea what the crowds were going to be. So we're walking across the park over to High Street. And lo and behold, we looked, and they were too deep all the way down High Street. And then a few years later, uh, the city of Columbus wanted to put a parade at 1 o'clock when we have ours on the 4th of July. And it was on Broad Street. And we outdrew them 5 to 1. And then they finally recognized, they went, hey, Something's going on in the short north. They have a parade, it's a good parade, and Greg and I worked on it, and we had a committee, Bill Keener, and a lot of guys, art artists, you know, to put the poster together. But uh, yeah, over the years, it was just a great organization, disorganization.